Welcome to another episode of The American Dream, the only show that goes against the grain of that negative media where our goal is to educate, empower, and engage your American Dream. Got a great show lined up for you with some inspiring guests. Of course, as we do the show, don't forget you can also follow us on social media, americandreamnetwork.tv. That being said, we got a show to do. Let's start it right now. Every single day you are consumed with information. With the 24-7 negative news cycle and the pop culture that's polluting the airwaves, all selling out for the ratings game. Well, guess what? There's a more positive way to look at life. You live in the greatest city in the greatest country on the planet. Every day with our elite network of professionals, our goal is to educate, empower, and engage. And now it's time to fight for your American dream. on the American dream. Look, the American dream has changed. Right now I'm writing a book called American Dream 2.0, and it's about the future of the American dream and the ability to dream about your, your goals, your aspirations, and how you can make them come true. Let me give you a real life example. I'm a guy from the Midwest. I went through a market crash, had over $100,000 in debt, lots of challenges, but through perseverance was able to start a media company. Now there's no manual, no one's ever paid me to host shows or anything like that, but what we did is we got with partners, we created an idea. Next thing you know, we had a studio, we're producing a show called The American Dream, where our goal is to combat negative media. Now, you see us on air, we're not owned by any network, we're commercial free, so you see us on TV, but the big play for us is digitally, and the stuff you can do on social media. Now is the best opportunity in the history of mankind to build a brand, to build a business. So today's story isn't really about me, I just share that with you as a point of reference. What about you? What is your passion? It could be a hobby, it could be your children, your church, your charity, pets, whatever. Whatever your passion is, you live in an online world now where you can get that story out, you can build a following, you can build a brand, and you can actually build a business. That is the American Dream 2.0. We are in a major cultural shift. We really wanna empower yours and help you to take advantage of these great opportunities. That's why you hear a lot of our stories about the entrepreneurial journey. I hope you can uh, check us out, uh, not only today, but online on social media. Cheers to your American Dream 2.0. Right, welcome back to the American Dream. I love business stories, I love the entrepreneurial journey, and I love people that just come up with great ideas. You got all that combined into one. I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, Daniel Kosh, you're the Chief Growth Officer with BizX. You and I yeah. were chatting before we came in. I was like, you know what? Dude, just, I'm tossing you a beach ball. Because it's really cool. So you've developed a community amongst businesses and a currency yeah. within it. So please, yeah. like, explain this. Well, that was actually, uh, Pretty good. I'm gonna write that down. It was lucky. Uh, that yeah, was really well, good. I was just like, Ugh. It's so just a little verbal, vo verbal vomit. There. It's yeah. good though. No, you're right. It's a community uh, of business owners and a currency that they all use. Uh, ultimately, what BizX is is exactly what you said. A community of thousands of business owners. So we have uh, just about uh, 6,700 now participating. Okay. Um, and what they do is they're able to find each other, leverage each other's strengths, learn from each other, but most importantly, they are able to buy and sell amongst each other with a digital currency that's called BizX dollars. Okay, so clue in here. This is where yeah. it's about to get really interesting. Yeah. I'm putting you on the spot, will you pull out that card again? Yeah. Like, don't knock off your microphone as yeah, you're no. doing the interview. But yeah. So they got a card yeah. that is a card that can be used as, as at like any a, of these vendors. Right. So yeah. give me an example. Yeah. Like, so give it's us a great. real life example. So uh, the, the the rooting of our concept is um, we were, were looking to reinvent uh, transactions and potential for small, medium-sized businesses. And what we did is we looked at barter, which was the original form of commerce. Sure. And we said, how so do we trading, take trading? I have this, you have that, we trade. for sheepskin or whatever, exactly. right? Like old school. Well, okay. that's right. And, and it was the original form of commerce that was usurped by currency for one reason, which yeah. is that it's liquid. Yeah. So we don't have to have how much grain is worth how many chickens. Sure. And what if you don't need chickens? Then, you know, or whatever. Right. So but I get the concept. So what we did, so... Um, our vendors, they buy and sell amongst each other with this currency that they all accept. One way that they're able to buy is with this, uh, through the app, through the website. But here's a real life example. Uh, if I'm, all right, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. If I'm a restaurant and you're a painter, okay. and I need to get my place touched up, Got it's it. gonna cost me two grand, whatever the case may be. As a business owner, and I'm, cash is always scarce to a local business owner, yep. I'm gonna try to find someone to trade with me. And this is outside of BizX. So I'm gonna call you up and I'm gonna say, Craig, 
Uh, this is a $2,000 job. I know that through historical. Can I give you a $2,000 tab? And if you at like the at the restaurant, and if you like my food and you've got the spare time, great deal. But all of those coincidences rarely line up. Yeah. So in our world, what would happen is, so I'm a BizX, I become a BizX member. I'm a restaurant owner. We've got 6,700 members who all have BizX dollars. So just by joining, I will earn BizX dollars through new customers that I haven't gotten because they can come and eat and not spend any cash. So there's a motivator there. Okay. Now I accrue a balance. So say people come in and eat lunch, it costs, pay, they pay me $100 BizX, the check comes, they put this down, they pay gratuity in cash. Now I've got 100 BizX that came from a table that otherwise would have been empty. Something breaks in my bathroom, like a sink is leaky. So instead of going to Google to find a handyman, I go to BizX, to the network, mm -hmm. and I find a handyman. I call him up, I say, hey Craig, you're the handyman in this scenario. Okay. Uh, Craig, um, this is Dan, I found you in BizX, I got a problem in the, my sink is leaking. Can you come by and fix it? You say, yes, I can be by tomorrow at 11. So you come by, you do the job, and I pay, just say it's 100 bucks, sure. I pay you 100 BizX. You, by definition, you only got that call because you were willing to accept the BizX. Right, you accepted That's why it, you got, now it. you got the credit. So in other words, you turned wasted time so, into value. Okay, so you basically open up new channels yeah. of opportunity. Then you spend that, So that right there, vacation, my next question you know. was gonna be, what's the advantage I think that's it, right? Is the fact that by being in this community, you're opening yourself up to business you wouldn't have had. You get new customers you wouldn't have had otherwise, and they pay you in a network currency that's equal to the dollar, and then you spend those right back in the network, so it's new customers, but then you improve your cash flow. Because when I served those two new customers who were eating at my restaurant, and I accrued a balance, great, new customers. When I spent that on you, where I otherwise would have had to pull a $100 bill out of my register, I improved my cash flow. A lot of this cryptocurrency that people are talking about, it's so hard for them to, it's not a tangible thing. People just don't right. understand it. And by the way, by people, I mean like me, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a complicated thing. What I think is really interesting about this is it's not, it, you're building relationships, right? You're building yeah. a network, a community, totally. and a real life you got it. interaction that wouldn't have been there before if you hadn't created this community of like credit. You got it. Currency. You nailed it. You nailed it. So the, the, the value of the network itself beyond the uh, transactional, financial, very material value, yep. uh, the value purely of the network is massive. I mean, networks have changed the way we live, right? Sure. It, networks have shrunk right. in the world. I mean, that's um, what social media no is. No question. And yep. so for us, you know, our big why ultimately is to be a, a resource, really the resource for small and medium-sized business owners who are fighting for their lives. So. Small and medium-sized business owners represent over 99% of all businesses in the United States of America. And they deliver a third of the total GDP, roughly $7 trillion. And they waste $2 trillion worth of capacity. They have available for sale that goes unsold. And so, right. and, and it's hard to support this So like this the group. painter who has extra paint. No question, Got yeah. Or the, the empty table at the restaurant, the unsold ad pages, the empty hotel room, you know, the stall at the auto mechanic that's just empty. Sure. And, and so, you know, we look at this and we say, well, how do we support this group? And it's, it's really through those two things, which is how to help them leverage their spare capacity to earn additional revenue and use that revenue to offset uh, And tap expenses. into new sources of commerce they would have never had. Exactly. I think it's fascinating. So we've got these 6,700 members. Last year, they transacted $100 million between each other in the network, all just like we've talked about. 100 million bucks. Yeah. All that wouldn't have existed otherwise. How do people find out about you? I'm, I'm assuming that yeah. a good person to reach out to you would be somebody who owns a business, right? Yeah, so it's all business owners, okay. um, and it's a B2B network, so the, the, um, the proportion of each industry vertical to the total network is relative to the, what businesses demand. So media is our number one industry. Okay. Because it's ubiquitous, all businesses can, can use it, and small and medium-sized business owners sometimes don't think they have the resources to get it, sure. to advertise, right? Right, got it, yeah. Uh, so we, so each of these networks and um, business owners go to our website. It's bizx.com. It's free to join, free to be a part of it. We charge transaction fees, so a small fee on every right. dollar That's transacted. How That's how we make our money, but it's free to be a part of it uh, outside of mm. that. And, but our members, actually, to answer your question directly, BizX has grown because our members have grown it. Because there's inherent value that increases the more members that join. Sure. So members reach Stating out and they refer itself. each other, and yeah, that's how. Love it. Daniel Kosh, Chief Growth Officer with BizX, bizx.com. I think it's a great story. I, I'm going to be really interested to watch your journey over the no next 6, 12, 18 months. But you're in this world now that 
the game, the game's changed. Yeah. The game's changed. You guys are tapping into it. I, I think it's fascinating. Daniel, thanks for coming thanks on the show. Man. Appreciate it. All right. More of the American Dream coming up next. Well, as you know, the American Dream is a national program where we focus on business, the entrepreneurial spirit, overcoming adversity, finance, the market, all things that are relevant to empowering your American Dream. But a big topic of conversation on this show is housing. So what we do is we integrate local, top-producing, award-winning realtors to cover a wide range of topics on that subject, different micro-markets, different niche subject matter. Housing is such a big topic, so we're going to bring you a lot of information right now from some of the best in your market. Let's check out these interviews. Well, in such a hot market, multiple bids are to be expected. And we are talking about the most effective ways to get your offer accepted with my next guest, Tommy Pastana, top producing listing specialist with Coldwell Banker. Tommy, thank you so much for being back on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So as the market now continues to stay strong in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I'm sure you are often running into bidding wars with your clients. So what are your three most effective strategies to make sure that your client's offer is the one that wins out? Well, you're correct. We are seeing a, a great market in DFW. Uh, we are seeing a lot of bidding wars, multiple offers. So I would say number one, as we all know, cash is king. If you have the ability to put in an all cash offer, that's going to put you in a top position uh, in this competitive market. It does a few things for you as a buyer. It's going to eliminate the mortgage. It's going to eliminate the appraisal. And it's also going to shorten the time frame of the transaction. Uh, just in case any unforeseen circumstances come up that uh, a buyer could terminate from. So it really gives the seller uh, peace of mind, you know, if you do come in with all cash. Sure. Well, you mentioned cash is king, but not everybody has all cash offers. What is your second best tip for making sure that that offer gets accepted? Well, on this one, I, th I think you got to get creative with the offer. You know, buyers and sellers, especially buyers, just think, hey, if I keep raising my offer, I'm eventually going to get the house. But sales price, in the end, sometimes isn't the best offer. Uh, here in, in the DFW Metroplex, sales are outpacing our appraisals. So what's happening is, for example, if your home's listed at 400000 you get multiple offers and you settle at four twenty. What happens if that appraisal comes in at $380,000? Usually the seller has to drop their price down to $380,000 unless they can negotiate that. So as a buyer, if you guarantee that difference when you come in with your best and final offer, that's really going to put you in a solid position uh, to get the home and win the bid. So what would your last tip then be for buyers dealing with a multiple offer situation? Well, this one's kind of old school, but I like to call it keep it personal. Uh, you know, get personal with your offer. Uh, submitting a letter with a photo of your family with an offer is a fantastic thing to do. Um, I actually just recently read that it gives you about a 50% more chance of winning um, a home in a multiple offer situation because it is a very emotional transaction for both the seller and the buyer. And, um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of sellers I work with, they end up selecting an offer that is actually a lower price because they like the family, they like the way the offer was presented. So just keep it personal, write them a personal letter and tell them how much you want the house. Absolutely. Personal works. Well, Tommy, before I let you go, I know that you have a beautiful property that you wanted to highlight for us today, and it's located in the incredibly desirable community of the Highlands of Trophy Club. Will you tell me a little bit about this property? Yes. Yeah, so Trophy Club is located just west, about five miles of the DFW uh, airport. So it's centrally located in the Metroplex. This is a fantastic property, uh, just over 3,500 square feet. Four bedrooms, three and a half baths, and we are listed at $549,000. It's in a master plan community, uh, community parks, tr uh, close to uh, Trophy Club, Country Club, just an overall great house. Absolutely spectacular. Tommy, always great to see you. Thank you so much for being back on the show. Awesome. Thank you. And with that, we will be right back with more of the American Dream. We are joined today by Nina Bonot, Top 20 Remax Realtor in Texas, and Dr. Mike Waldrop, 
Superintendent of Schools of Frisco Independent School District. Frisco ISD is one of the fastest growing school districts in the nation. It is highly sought after by families moving or relocating to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Thank you both so much for being on the American Dream today. Thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, my first question then is how should people evaluate an ISD and if it's a good fit for them? And what makes Frisco ISD so attractive to buyers? Um, that's actually a question I get a lot from my clients. Um, you know, they ask what makes Frisco ISD so popular. And I thought, who better to bring in than the person leading the charge, the superintendent of Frisco ISD? So, Mike, uh, why do you think that is? Well, I, first of all, I, Frisco is a very attractive place to live. Um, we have a unique partnership uh, with the city of Frisco, and we always have. Uh, we've worked hand in hand as this community's grown and developed. And uh, we like to say a lot of times that uh, uh, what's good for the city is good for the school district and vice versa. Uh, I think we have uh, really great schools. Uh, the city itself has a lot to offer. So it's just a really good place to live. What are some of the challenges that come with the fast growth that Frisco is experiencing? Um, I know for the residents of Frisco that um, I've talked to, one of the challenges that they've um, talked about is they move to a specific area or location because it's zoned to a specific school and then sometimes it may get rezoned. So sometimes they're concerned about that. Um, how does the Frisco ISD deal with the rezoning that sometimes occurs? Yeah, well, re rezoning is probably one of the... Uh, uh, one of the things that we look forward to the least uh, because we usually have to do something with rezoning every year because we've grown so rapidly as a school district. And uh, we've got a model where we try to keep our schools small. We try to keep neighborhood schools so it's easy to access. Uh, but as you can imagine, as rapidly as we grow, those schools tend to fill up and uh, we have to build new buildings. And then when we build those new buildings, we have to do some rezoning uh, to to best use our facilities and to, to take care of the overcrowding. But uh, we like to think, and, and we do think that all our schools are really good schools. Uh, and in the moment, uh, people sometimes get a little bit upset about the rezoning issue, but once they're in the new school and they see that it's just as good as the school they came from, that kind of goes away. And uh, so does some of that anxiety that comes with rezoning. Sure. Now, Mike, you're still relatively new. You've been a superintendent for a little over a year now. What does your vision look like for the Frisco area and for the school district? And how are you going to look to help the families in that community? Well, we still grow uh, very rapidly. Our growth has slowed some, but we are still the fastest growing school district in the state of Texas. Wow. Uh, so that's clearly an issue that we're going to have to continue to deal with. Uh, we've also adopted a, a future ready mantra in our school district. And, and basically all that means is that we're trying to prepare our students for what's next for them. Uh, we want to give them choices. We want to give them options. And we want to make sure they're prepared to, to move on beyond what, what uh, schooling we provide for them. And if college is a thing for them or if a career is a thing for them. You know, we have a career and technology center that offers 30 industry certifications. Uh, so kids can leave us and be uh, actually have a marketable skill and go to work right away if that's what they choose to do. Or they can use that along with furthering their education. So we want to we want to really prepare our kids for what's next for them. Absolutely. And Nina, are you finding that your clients and people coming to you are really clamoring to get into this area because of these schools in the school district? Yeah, you know, one of the things that attracts a lot of buyers to Frisco is the Frisco ISD. You know, a lot of times I get questions and they're interested in moving here. It's the ISD that brings them here. And so they're always wanting more information about it, wanting to know what's on the horizon for it. But I feel like it's one of those great elements that um, the city of Frisco offers that um, a lot of the residents of Frisco enjoys and potential buyers moving into the area. Absolutely. Great schools are invaluable. Thank you both so much for being on the American Dream today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And of course, we encourage our viewers to join our conversation online and on social media. And we will be right back with more of the American Dream.
Welcome back to the American Dream. Well, we are talking about two of my favorite things today, the economy and the next dessert craze to hit the Dallas area. With my next two guests, Denton Aguam, owner founder of Dare Network with Keller Williams Realty, and Chrissy Quo, owner of Snow Baby. Thank you both so much for being on the American Dream today. Thank you. Thank you. So Denton, I want to start with you and I want to get an overall view right now of the Dallas economy. How is it looking today? Yeah, it's great right now. You know, we have on average over 600 people moving in a day uh, just to Dallas. Uh, Texas itself has the largest population migration in the state. So we welcome these people. It's going to drive the real estate markets. Uh, it's going to drive the economy. Uh, and we have both large businesses here like AT&T and American Airlines as well as small businesses, which is the engine of DFW, to be honest. You know, it's really pushing our economy and creating a lot of income. Well, you mentioned business, so I want to take it over to Chrissy now. And Chrissy, I mentioned in the open you are the owner of Snow Baby, but first I want to hear a little bit more about your background. My background, I have about a 15-year career in business, did marketing, brand, and digital marketing, as well as sales and management. So I've been in corporate, raised um, in the corporate world for, for a long time. That's my background. So how did you come up with the concept for Snow Baby? I, I hear it's a, if a snow cone and an ice cream had a baby? It'd be a snow baby. That's right, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's, that's the best way to describe it. But I came up with the concept because it's actually, um, I'm, I'm Chinese, Taiwanese, and it's inspired by Taiwanese shaved ice. We call it xue hua bing or mian mian bing. And it's inspired by that because my husband and I were eating it and we were thinking this would be so great in Dallas. Dallas is very dynamic, it's very young, and just like Denton said, it's got a lot of people that are open to new things. And so um, that's how we came up with it, and um, it was my version of it because I just wanted to make it, it um, special and have my twist on it. So what makes it so special? Is it that twist and that you bring that special flavor to it? And what's in store for your company for the future? Sure. So. What makes Snow Baby special is the fact that it's actually healthier for you. I say that it's the better frozen treat. Um, it's, it's half snow cone, you get the refreshing side of it and you get the creaminess of an ice cream, but you don't get the heavy feeling or the, the calories that come with those types of desserts. Um, it's all made of fresh products. There are no milk powders artificial coloring, flavoring or sweeteners in there, no preservatives. It's all fresh as possible. And, and what makes it special is, is that. It's imagine if your mom uh, made you a milky popsicle and we take that block of ice or that popsicle, shave it in thin ribbon-like sheets to give it that texture of freshly fallen fluffy snow. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've heard of people wanting smell-o-vision, but can we have taste-o-vision? This sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, Denton, you know, you mentioned larger businesses earlier in the interview, and, and now we're talking to Chrissy, who has maybe a smaller, more personal business. So how are yeah. these businesses in general affecting the market, and the real estate market specifically? Yeah, so it's bringing a lot of great people here to Dallas, like I said, 600 a day. And kind of what's happened now um, is that... Uh, We've got a lot of buyers coming in that want to buy their first home, but there's not any homes available to buy. So we're kind of running into that first time home buyer uh, issue right now, just a lack of inventory. Uh, so what happens is when somebody can't buy their first home, the person in that first home can't buy their move up home. And it creates a waterfall effect where the market kind of stalls out a little bit. Interesting. So what is your team doing to combat the effects of that? Yeah, so we've partnered up with two major investors. One of them uh, will basically, if it meets their parameters, uh, will put an all-cash offer on your house within 48 to 72 hours. The other one is another investor that uh, you could be somebody that wants to rent a house, or maybe you're reloading here and you don't necessarily want to buy a house right away, but they will buy the house for you, and then you can rent it from them. But you get to pick the house. So now the number of houses available for you to find increases dramatically as well. Well, it's always great to have options like that, Denton. Well, before I let you go, though, I want to be sure that I give you an opportunity to highlight this beautiful home, a listing. It's a four-bedroom, three-bath? That's right. It's 902 Stewart in Dallas, Texas, specifically uh, Kessler Highlands in Kessler Park. It's a beautiful home that's been remodeled uh, from the studs. Uh, 
famed architect Andrew Krubero uh, did the remodeling. And it also has four living areas and a guest quarters uh, in case you want to have any family or friends come visit you here in Dallas. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much for being on the show today. And Chrissy, best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will be right back with more of the American Dream. You just heard from award-winning realtors about your marketplace. It's one thing to find your dream home. It's another thing to finance it. I've traveled the country to find the best mortgage experts in every city. You're going to hear from yours in a Mortgage Minute right now. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a full pre-underwrite. You know, earlier Tommy was talking about uh, the three ways to compete and win out in a multiple bid situation. Uh, we also had some other great realtors on talking about the economy, what's going on in certain areas, and the bottom line is it's competitive out there. And if you don't have cash, you need one of two other things when you're in a competitive bid situation. One, a good pre-approval regardless. So the pre-qualification you got because you filled out a form online and they told you, hey, here's your rate and terms, doesn't hold any water when you are going to make an offer and there's a lot of bids. Listing agents, they're smart. They understand that nobody's seen your documentation and this is a weak pre-qualification. There's certain language in the letter that is going to get you and the realtor laughed out of that situation. It's going to go to the bottom of the stack. So don't do that. I know you're busy and you want the home. I know no one wants a mortgage, okay? But you need it if you don't have cash. And if you're gonna do it, you should do it right. So get a strong pre-approval at least from a lender you trust that is competitive on terms but also has a great online reputation, uses technology, because that is what you need in a market like this. They need to be responsive. They can't be closing up five o'clock and not working weekends. You need someone local that has a reputation with the realtors in the community because that who moves the real estate. And they need to see your documentation. They need to see it. That's what they have to see to help you get the offer accepted. If they don't, they can't put that on the letter and you're, again, not gonna get it. And number two, a pre-underwritten loan. That means it is fully underwritten. An underwriter sees it, they've reviewed everything, and the only thing you're gonna wait on is the property. If you go up in a competitive bid situation, especially on bigger a house, uh, a bigger houses, right in the jumbo world, above half a million dollars, and you're putting that down, you're gonna be in competitive space, Having your loan completely underwritten really puts stands out in front of the competition. If you're self-employed, if you've got a new job, if you're commissioned, or if you're doing FHA and you've got less down payment and you know people that are gonna be going in with conventional loans are going to maybe have an advantage to you, one great way to make sure you counteract that is to have your loan completely done. So there's no questions. Everybody knows you're fully approved. All they need to do is inspect the property. You can close super fast. 10 to 15 days, and that really helps you stand out. So that's your Mortgage Minute. It was about two, but I'm not one for brevity. Thanks for watching. That's all for today's show. Hey, don't forget, we're way more active online than what you see on cable. Make sure you follow us there as well on social media. Do it on your phone. Just do it. If you're thinking about it, do it. Go to your phone, AmericanDreamNetwork.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Engage in the conversation. Of course, cheers to your American Dream. See you next time.